Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. My name is Reese Christian. I'm a product manager on Portfolio for Jira Server and Data Center, the subject of this session. A lot has changed in the ways that teams work since Portfolio for Jira joined the Atlassian family in 2014. Team structures have shifted and more and more teams are adopting Jira to provide a foundation for greater agility. They have more autonomy but must stay connected to their adjacent teams and communicate their plans effectively with stakeholders. As a result, a year ago, we launched Portfolio 3.0 platform release for server and data center. The new interface radically changes Portfolio to meet these needs and support Atlassian customers on their agile journey. In this session, I'll share with you some highlights of what's new, give you a sneak peek into what we're planning for the future, and provide some tips on where you can find more information on this product. But before we dive in, let's first cover a quick overview of this great product. Portfolio was built for Jira software. Portfolio Plans uses data from a selection of multiple projects, boards, or Jira filters as the sources of your issues. The app allows you to create a realistic roadmap for your teams based on work that's happening in Jira software, make data-driven decisions as you evolve plans and respond to change, and keep stakeholders up to date on how teams are tracking. So, for those of you not familiar, Let's dig into some of the key features Portfolio 3 has to offer. First up, an intuitive planning UI makes it easier to see and manipulate data that powers your roadmap. Just for some context, Portfolio is split up into three main tabs, Roadmap, Team, and Releases. Here we're looking at the Roadmap tab, which is where you spend most of your time managing your roadmap. The hierarchy we can see here are Initiatives. That is a level above Epic that we've set up thanks to Portfolio. You can set up as many levels of hierarchy as you need using Portfolio. First, we'll show how this interface is great for servicing information from issues, as well as managing changes on issues. Starting with an existing plan, we'll add some more fields to see what's going on. The status and progress fields give us an indication of what's happening with an issue and its children. We can drill down into the descendants of an issue see the epics in the initiative, and even drill down into the stories. So we'll make some changes here. We'll quickly give ourselves a bit more space to work with and show targeted releases. From here, we can directly update the targeted release for an issue. That's just some of the basic controls for managing issues. Next is Portfolio's enhanced drag and drop scheduling functionality which gives you flexibility to shape your roadmap to your liking. Some additional context is that this interface is a sandbox. So changes you make won't be saved into Jira until you decide to commit the data to Jira. On the top right, you see the review changes and it'll increase for all the changes that you make in your plan. So let's create a new Epic in the Android app project for trip management. We can quickly drag and drop it into the appropriate initiative. Then from there, it's really simple to create stories for that epic and break it down in line. We can then plan when we'll start work on them by directly manipulating the roadmap. Notice that the epic dates automatically get set from the children. Then there's filtering options and view settings, allowing you to see your plan through different lenses and tailor the experience for different audiences. After the 3.0 release a year ago, we rapidly shipped more improvements to the filters and view settings, so you have even more control over what is visible and how it's visualized. Let's configure the view settings for this plan to our liking. We can group issues by a number of different attributes. Let's see the issues grouped by team, and we can also choose to view the team's sprints on the roadmap. Notice how we're also showing the team's capacity per sprint that helps us determine the feasibility of their upcoming plan scope. Now let's filter the results so that we're only looking at issues owned by the iOS team to get rid of the other groups. Let's also just look at the issues targeted for the beta release. So this effectively isolates all the issues in my plan to only see what I'm interested in looking at right now. Next up is Portfolio's improved dependency management capabilities, which helps you instantly surface conflicts early before they derail your plan. 
The numbers you see in the timeline represent dependencies on the issues. A dependency at the end of an issue means that it's blocking another issue. A dependency at the start of an issue means that it's being blocked by another issue. Let's filter for all the issues in our plan that have dependencies, so we can isolate all the ones that have either a blocking or blocked relationship. We can quickly identify scheduling problems from the color of the dependency marker. If a badge is red, it means there's a conflict, that a blocking item overlaps with the start date of a blocked item. Now we'll focus on a specific issue in the web project. We can filter for the dependencies of that issue and choose to see the entire chain of interdependent issues that is related. Meaning if you have a situation where A blocks B, B blocks C, C blocks D, will service all of the issues in that chain. This allows you to quickly identify and resolve scheduling problems before they become a nasty surprise. It's easy to add a new dependency to an issue from the dependency badge or when hovering over an issue. Then there's capacity management capabilities that help you understand the feasibility of the work scoped over a given period of time. Capacity re represents estimates assigned to issues, when issues are scheduled, and is calculated against the velocity of your team. When enabled, each sprint row will visualize iterations for the length of the team's sprint cadence, if they're using Scrum, or weekly iteration for Kanban. Capacity is displayed based on the stories assigned to a given sprint. Aggregating the estimates of scoped work and comparing it against the velocity of your team, defined in the team view. As estimates of your sprints aggregate, it fills the green bar so you're able to clearly see when your resources are overutilized or underutilized. This allows you to make educated decisions on how to tackle your work so your teams can stay on track and deliver on time. In this example, you can see that one of the sprints, Dingo, has turned red because it's overbooked. We can investigate the issues assigned to the team's sprints and balance the workload to more effectively distribute the work over their iterations. And rounding out our list, for advanced users, we have a powerful scheduling algorithm that will allow you to auto-schedule your entire roadmap with a click of a button. So this is a major difference between Portfolio 2.0 and 3.0. The timeline on Portfolio 2.0 was entirely based on the output of the scheduling algorithm. You would provide the data to Portfolio, and when you click Calculate, it would generate the schedule for you. Portfolio 3.0 has changed this quite significantly. You now have a lot more control to schedule the roadmap that you want, and Portfolio will provide you the data and insights that you need to keep your plan realistic. So, we can ask Portfolio to auto-schedule our plan. And if we're happy with a preview of what the plan looks like, we can accept the changes. I know I've highlighted this point a lot, but trust me when I say that this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to all that Portfolio 3 has to offer. Our team is constantly iterating and improving on this experience with input from our customers. Here's a quick overview of what we've shipped since launching Threadado a year ago. When it comes to managing your data, we've implemented new fields including support for a variety of custom fields, ability to sort fields, more filters including custom field filtering, a bunch more bulk actions, and additional view setting support. Beyond these improvements, we've also recently built a variety of new features that provide more consumable visualization options when reporting plans to stakeholders. In 3.12, we announced the arrival of the Portfolio for Jira plan Confluence macro. This macro enables users to embed a lightweight portfolio plan directly in Confluence pages, helping you to keep everyone on the same page even as plans evolve. The Portfolio for Jira Plan Confluence Macro is now available as an app in the Atlassian Marketplace, a stepping stone to our eventual launch of a fully embedded Confluence Macro. We've recently released new functionality to export your plan into a CSV file. These CSV files can be used for a wide range of flexible custom reporting by a number of spreadsheet tools. They can also be used for data integrations with other tools you may depend on. Lastly, only days ago, we released a feature customers have been asking for since the launch of 3.0, the ability to quickly save and switch between different saved view configurations. Filters, fields, view settings, colors, groups, sorting, 
and even more are stored in the saved view. You no longer have to adjust these individually or whenever you want to apply a new lens to your plan. You can easily save views and quickly access them from the dropdown. They're also available to anyone else who has access to the plan. Beyond all this, we've also shipped a huge amount of quality of life, usability improvements and bug fixes in multiple regularly recurring fortnightly releases. So with all this, you might be thinking, what's next for Portfolio for Jira? Well, only time will tell, but you can expect continued focus on areas of improving roadmap visualization, sharing with planned stakeholders, and improve the consumability of plan information. New features related to capacity management are on the way, and improving the experience for new users to get value from Portfolio is a big focus. So stay tuned, there's more to come. For more information on Portfolio for Jira server and data center, visit atlassian.com slash portfolio3. There, among other resources, you'll find access to our on-demand webinar, which provides an end-to-end -end demo of Portfolio for Jira 3 Thank you all so much for taking the time to check out this demo.